welcome back to the channel. Welcome if you are new. For those of you who are new, my name is Anna and this is At Home with Anna. So today we're going to get into some fun crafts for the home. We're going to be doing a fabric pleated lampshade. I'm just going to show you how I did it and you can take from it what you want. Um, I will tell you that it takes a lot of patience. <laughs> Um, but the outcome is um, definitely worth it. And then I bought these cute little vessels at some vintage stores and they did not <laughs> come looking like this. Um, they were very old looking and very uh, dirty <laughs> and needed to be cleaned. Um, but these are the vessels that I bought because I wanted to make candles for my home and I just thought that this little cauldron was just so special and I love this little vessel with the rope detail so I thought they would be just beautiful as candles in my home so we're going to be pouring that I bought a candle making kit I've already opened it and dug into it but this is here and I'll make sure to link it down below for you but it comes with all kinds of <laughs> fun stuff so we're going to be digging into this and getting those candles made um, together. I am somebody who loves to DIY and I love to do um, do-it-yourself DIY projects, but I don't like things to look too DIY, if that makes sense. So this is the fabric that I chose for my lampshade. It's a pretty forgiving fabric. And I think that it looks really pretty. It's got, you can't tell on camera, but it's got like taupe and like a gray blue and a cream color in it. It's really pretty. So this is the fabric we're gonna be working with um, for our lampshade. So this is the lampshade that I've already done. And it came out really nice, <laughs> but it tested my patience. So the beauty of this kind of project is you can um, make it specific to your taste. So your pleats can be larger, they can be smaller, they can be thinner, more um, close together. Totally up to you. Just note that the tighter your pleats, the more fabric you're going to need. So after completing this one, I had some ideas on how I could have done this better quicker. Um, there's some mistakes in here, uh, but you know what? It's okay. They look, it looks good. It looks really good. So these are the lampshades that are going on the lamps that are going to go in the den eventually. They're in my office right now, but I love it. I think they're beautiful. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here is the lampshade. Something that I didn't do on the last one that I'm going to do on this one because... I only have about a half a yard of fabric left. Um, and to make this stretch further, I can always go back and get more, um, but I'm gonna try to do it without that. So to make it stretch further, what I'm going to do is, because, because when you're doing the pleating, you don't wanna take your pleats all the way to the edge, you wanna leave, um, I don't know, maybe about a quarter of an inch on either side for your uh, hem or whatever that finish piece is that goes here. So I'm going to just kind of mark this and um, take. keep in mind your, now I have this kind of a lampshade where it's smaller on the bottom and larger on the top here. But I'm just gonna kind of guesstimate how much you know, I'm going to need and I'm just going to cut it in strips. So I'm going to take it to the top on this side and leave it about a quarter of an inch on this side. And this is exactly where I want it to cut. So I'm going to go ahead and cut here. I have put a bead of hot glue here on the seam. I'm using my hot glue gun here 
and I'm using the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. So I put a thin bead, I didn't go all the way to the bottom or the top, and I'm just gonna take my fabric that I cut, make sure that you put it <laughs> right side, and I'm just going to place that right on there, just like this. Just like that. I talked a little bit too much, that got a little hard. Just like that. And that's how I'm gonna start. And then I'm going to, now you're, because your lampshade, if you have a lampshade like mine where it's smaller on one side and wider mouthed on the bottom, your fabric's gonna want to go askew. <laughs> so you're gonna have to keep correcting it. So what I do is, um, I wanna make sure that I keep the same size. I think that's what, about, I don't know, an inch and a half, my flap, just like that. And when I did that, I made sure that right here it was even and down here was even. So I have this nice little flap. Now I'm just gonna take a little bit of hot glue and I'm gonna go underneath here, just one little dab and place it there and then do the same with this one little tiny dab and set it down and then do the same on this side. Just a little dab down here and then a little dab underneath the flap here. And that's it. And you're just gonna repeat this around the whole shade. Take your time with it because, and I promise if you take your time, you're gonna be really happy that you did. Don't rush this project, especially if it's your first time doing it. Um, I rushed my very first one and it looks horrible. I have to fix it. I'm hoping I can salvage it, but you know, if not, lessons learned. And then my second one, which was the other one of these, I took a little bit more time with it. And now this time I'm really gonna take my time and just make sure because, you know, it can be frustrating. So again, now for the second flap, I'm just gonna pull the fabric up and I'm gonna lay it down again. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm even here and I'm even here. If there's a little bit of fabric showing here, don't worry about that because you're going to put your finish pieces on. So all your edges are gonna be covered, okay? So you're gonna end up with a little bit thinner here and a little wider on the bottom and that's perfectly fine. A little dab there, a little dab here. That's it. So you can see how nice that is. So I'm just going to continue the process all the way around.
that one strip. So because I, you know, didn't I didn't know what I was doing when I was doing the second one. I didn't cut the yard in long strips, which I should have done, which you'll do <laughs> if you're going to do this. So I have this other strip. So I'm just gonna hot glue this one down here so it's nice and flat. And then I'll come in with my second one. I'll hot glue it right there like that, underneath this flap, and then start my thing. done getting that pleated now I need to work on these finish pieces this is all the fabric that I have and obviously it's not going to be enough to stretch all the way around to um, you know the whole thing so if there is a place where I have to um, you know, join two pieces together. I want it to be towards the back, which is where the seam is on here. So um, I'm gonna try my best to do that. But again, ideally, the reason why I'm left with just this <laughs> is because I, um, I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing the first time. It was, it's, this is all trial and error for me. And so if you had a yard of fabric, um, a nice long strip, you'd be able to cut those out first, which is what I should have done, but I didn't. So that's okay. We're working with what we have. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut probably um, about a one inch, like one inch strips here. So I'll be able to get like three out of this. And, um, and then I'm gonna iron them, um, and I'll show you how I do that. Makes me so mad. I thought I was filming and I wasn't, so. <laughs> I've already made one of my strips. My son called and interrupt, <laughs> interrupted. Anyway, so all I did with those strips I cut out is I just ironed them like this here. And you know, it's not perfect. It doesn't look perfect, but this is the underside. It's gonna be hot glued on like this. So I have one here that I'm doing. So I'm just taking the strip and just kind of folding it over like that. You want to make sure that you're staying the same width all the way down. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my hot glue just to get it started. And I'm going to take my tab and I'm just going to put it a little bit higher, a little bit higher than the end of my pleating because you want it to hide your pleating like that. Just like that. This hot glue is hot. Burns your fingers. Now, if I have any strips, I will tell you, if I have any strips that I feel like are going to be showing in here, I'll just come in with my scissors and cut it off. Just like that. Because I don't want any fabric sticking up from my, my hem or my seam, whatever this is called. Somebody correct me. But just like that. Isn't that nice? So I'm going to continue this all the way around. When I get to the second piece, I'll show you how I'm going to put them together.
to right here that I need to add another piece. So, I am just going to take this piece, and you, you probably don't have to do this, but you see I left a little, a little flap here. So I'm just gonna kind of slide this one over that one, just like that. Let me get that in place. Kind of marry the two together. Um, this takes a little bit of time, but I want the least amount of, um, oops. I want the least amount of uh, raw edge to show. And that is just what I found on the other one. And it just takes a little bit of effort on your part to do this, but I promise you it's totally worth it. And remember, we started in the back and we're ending in the back. So most of this is gonna be seen anyway, not gonna be seen because this is the front of the lampshade. So keep that in mind when you're doing it. And you don't have to do this. I'm just being extra, totally up to you. But that's what it'll look like. Right there. So it's not bad. Not bad at all. Especially if you were using a busier fabric, um, you're not gonna see this kind of stuff at all. This is a more, a cleaner pattern, I guess. And so all of this stuff is, um, I don't know, it's a little bit harder to hide these kind of things. Okay. Now this one, because I wasn't thinking ahead, I didn't leave my flap open, but I'm just for a nice clean edge, I'm gonna go over it and cut it, nice clean cut, and go ahead and just glue that down. Actually, it might even be look better if I line that up with uh, a pleat, so let me do that. Absolutely looks better if you line it up with the pleat. <clears throat> Here we go, and that's it. It looks good because I lined it up with the pleat, so it looks good. All right, so the top is done. I do want to mention, I like the loose pleat look. You can see they're real loose, but you absolutely can go in and glue these down so that you have more of a, um, I don't know, more manicured look, but I like this look here. So totally up to you. You can play with it. It's your lampshade. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and do the bottom. lampshade. Doesn't that look good you guys? So pretty. What I love about these is you can coordinate the fabric with your interior design like whatever you are doing as far as you know like a little girl's room or a little boy's room, an office, you know whatever it is you can coordinate the fabric with your decor and if you go and look now this might not be for everybody and I totally get that but when I look at interior design, I look at magazines, I watch the shows, the one thing that stands out to me is you very rarely see an unfinished lampshade. <laughs> and I love it. I just think that it adds such a, 
um, touch of elegance to any room. I get it, it might not be for everybody, but definitely for me, now when I see a lampshade in my home <laughs> that is white, I look at it as naked. It's naked, it needs to be dressed. So um, anyways, pretty easy to do. You know, um, this one was definitely a lot easier than the last one I did, and of course, a lot easier than the first one I did. Um, you know, and like I said, the pleats can be different depending on you. You can have a more, you know, a lot thinner one. Um, you know, you could even just hot glue fabric flat on the shade, which I plan on doing to um, some little lampshades that I have for some sconces, and then just doing the edging on it. So I'm not going to pleat, pleat it, I'm just going to cover them and then just do the edging on it so that they're not white. Um, and they just, they look good. So um, anyways, let's go put these where they belong and you guys can see the finished look. guys so here is my kit we are going to open this together I'm gonna to look through it I kind of opened it and kind of went through it but here are my vessels that I'm going to be using to make my candles so what we have in here which I thought was really cool so there are some little packets of like dried flowers and I thought that those were so sweet I'm not exactly sure how to use them I've never made a candle before but we are going to do this together there are a package of wicks that it comes with and these are the popsicle sticks with the hole so um, It'll sit, I'm hoping this one fits. Oh yeah, it does. So it'll sit like that, I'm assuming, um, with the wick coming through when you pour. So we got those. And then I'm not sure what these are. I'm gonna have to read the directions, but little, they're like little plastic, or wax hearts, which are so cute. So we'll see what we use those for. But then it also came with, um, see some scents it came with six total so we have bluebells jasmine and rose and we've got lemon um what is that freesia freesia and lavender perfume oil is what it's called it comes with a little pair of scissors for cutting your wick i'm assuming it comes with several bags of five total of the wax melts um, and this is really cool so you can make candles for a gift uh, four six eight ten so ten little candle um, containers so you can make your own little candles for gifts which I thought was so sweet it comes with the warning labels to put on the bottom of the container or whatever container you're gonna use. And then these sweet little labels that you can write on and say who it's from. Handmade with love. So that's really sweet. And then these little things, little uh, foam um, feet, I'm assuming you put on the bottom of these containers so they don't slide. And it comes with a electric stove. and your little pot so there we go oh and it comes with a thermometer a little spoon so cute so everything you need to make a candle is here so. step one center the wick to the bottom of the candle tin Place the, um, step two is place the metal pouring pot on the electric stove. Step three is pour in a whole bag of beeswax 
Then reheat the wax until it melts. Step four, add two dye blocks and stir until, okay. So these are dye blocks. That's what these are. These are dye blocks. So stir in two dye blocks and stir until fully combined. And step five, within, you want it to be within 125 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Add a full bottle of oil and stir. So I just have to choose which scent I want my, um, my candle to be. So we'll do that first. But let's uh, open these and see what the scent is because I think that a scent in your home is um, super important how you want your home to smell so I don't like anything that's super floral and that is definitely not something that I like it absolutely smells like a red rose do not like this is bluebells I love the flower but I can't remember what they smell like Ooh, now that smells good. That smells uh, sweet and fresh at the same time. So that's a definite, definite uh, runner up. Freesia, again, love the flower, but don't remember what it smells like. Mm. That smells mm, That smells a little too I don't know. Um uh, It smells like a candle you'd find at the Dollar Tree, and I'm not being hateful, I'm just saying. Jasmine, I love jasmine. Let's see how this one smells. I'm kind of guessing I'm going to go with lemon, but we'll see. Oh. oh, I love the smell of jasmine. Again, I feel like that is a scent that you would find at the Dollar Tree. Not being hateful again, not being hateful, just saying. Please be good, lemon. You're my last hope. Oh, no, I have lavender. Mmm, this one smells good. It smells like a kitchen. Oh yeah, this is definitely a kitchen scent. A lemon. So that's a possibility, but I forgot lavender. So let's see what the lavender smells like. Oh, that smells good. Mmm, that smells good. Okay, that's a runner up. Let me do the blueberry again. Or bluebells, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm gonna do the bluebells, I think. This is definitely a runner up, the ones that it comes with. I'm hoping these are long enough. So they're gonna be like right there. I might get my hot glue gun out and hot glue this to the bottom, actually. I think I will. Actually, that's not bad. But, all right, so I have those centered, so we'll just set those aside. Um, place the metal pouring pot on the electric stove. So let's open that. Okay, up. change of plans. <laughs> that thing scared me, so I'm gonna wait and do that outside, um, but just for the sake of the video today, I'm just gonna try and melt it here on the stove with the pot. And then I have this rice strainer that fits perfectly in there. And I'm going to place my little pot that came with the candle making kit. I'm gonna go ahead and dump my um, beeswax in here. You have to have the patience of a saint for this. Okay, we are just about fully melted. So now I'm gonna check the temperature. It is supposed to be between 120 and 400 before I put the oil in. And we are at over 120. Wax melt in first. The little um, tiny one.
Okay guys, so for the next project, we are going to be using craft eggs and we're going to decoupage them because I thought that it would be really nice to have a bowl of vintage looking uh, Easter eggs for my Easter decor. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. I have already started making some here and um, I'm using this tissue paper that I got on Am uh, yeah, Amazon. I'll make sure to link it down below. And then I got this one as well. They're so cute. So I'm gonna be using the Mod Podge. And I have a pair of scissors here, and of course my eggs. Now I do want to say that you can start off by painting your eggs, which we're going to do. We're going to paint the eggs and we're going to let them dry. And then when they're dry, we're going to go ahead and decoupage um, these uh, designs onto it. creating these projects with you guys today especially this one it was a bonus I didn't plan on adding this one but as I was doing it I said you know what my friends are going to want to see this so I went ahead and added it I hope you guys enjoyed I hope that I've inspired you guys to create something beautiful in your own home remember those personal touches that you add to your home decor is what makes your home stand out from others I want to thank you all so much for hanging out with me today and staying until the end I appreciate you guys so much if you haven't subscribed yet, I hope that you plan on doing that before you leave today. We would love to have you join our little corner over here on YouTube. Thanks again, guys, and we will see you in the next video. Bye!